The goal of this video is to give you the basic execution building blocks you need to succeed as a biken player in Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus R. Everything presented here will be in the beginner to intermediate difficulty, but it still takes practice. Don't expect to immediately pick this stuff up. If you practice one or two things for about 10 minutes each time you boot up the game, you'll master them in no time. Really quick, let's go over some standard Guilty Gear notation so you know what I'm talking about later in the video. On the left is the basic arcade stick layout, and on the right is the basic PS4 pad layout. You don't have to play with either of these. After all, one high-level Guilty Gear player has even played on a steering wheel. But these diagrams are just to give you a point of reference. Bind your buttons to whatever you like. Let's go over the buttons first. P stands for punch, K is kick, S is slash, H is heavy slash, and D is dust. Macros are available in the button bind list to help you press multiple buttons at a time to help you with system mechanics such as Roman cancels and faultless defense. The numpad notation is just like it sounds. Numbers correspond to directions. If you ever get confused, just look down at your keyboard's numpad. Lastly, all directional inputs are always referenced from the player one or left hand side. The first pieces of tech we'll go over will be related to Tatami Gaishi, or Biken's 236K. Tatami can be used both in the air and on the ground. Both forms are used in combos, but they have different uses in neutral and pressure situations. Let's cover those. Ground Tatami is usually used for pressure. For example, if you have someone in the corner, it's a great option to lock them down. It can also be used in neutral, but it doesn't cover much space and can leave you open to aerial approaches. It's a great combo starter in the corner, but to combo off of it mid-screen, you'll need to learn how to Tatami FRC Kirei Tatami which is one of the game's most advanced techniques. Ground Tatami isn't very difficult to do on its own, so we won't cover it anymore in this tech video. Air Tatami is one of Biken's primary neutral tools. It's very flexible and covers important spaces on the screen while also allowing Biken to gain space or approach as needed. It's a combo starter both in the corner and mid-screen with some practice. The simplest form of air tatami is just a jumping tatami. Neutral jump tatami won't move Biken anywhere horizontally, but it covers vertical space. Back jump tatami is a defensive option that gives you some breathing room while setting up a space trap. Forward jump tatami lets you approach a small distance while setting yourself up for pressure if you succeed. To use jump tatami to its maximum potential, try to use it as close to the ground as possible. This rule applies to every single form of tatami on this list. Here's what a low to the ground jump tatami looks like. Here's what a bad jump tatami looks like. Notice how Biken lands when the tatami mat is still above her, leaving her open to things like long pokes or projectiles. The next type of air tatami is the instant back air dash tatami, or IAD back tatami. This is two things chained together, a back instant air dash and a tatami. One thing you'll quickly begin to notice with Biken is that all of her difficult execution is just many things chained together. So while this is an easy technique, it's still a good example. Here's a quick example of an IAD back to Tommy. Here's an example of a simple follow-up combo to throw some hurt on an opponent who ran into the Tommy. Next up is the instant forward air dash to Tommy. This is very similar to the instant back air dash to Tommy, but it's less useful because it's easy for your opponents to react to. That said, it can be useful for Okazume and to go above projectiles. Last on the list is Kirei to Tommy, which is a tiger need air dash to Tommy. You can think of it like a faster, shorter, forward IAD tatami. Kirei tatami takes some practice, but it's incredibly useful for approaching a neutral and for some of the more advanced combo pickups available to Biken. Before we go over the details of how to perform it, here's a direct comparison between instant air dash tatami and Kirei tatami. Notice how much faster it is. It's more difficult for opponents to react to. Kirei tatami can be described as a very fast IAD tatami. The example comparison I just showed you had me on the top and putting an IAD tatami, and me on the bottom with my personal Kirei tatami method. An excellent Biken player named Enoch was nice enough to send me a clip of his hitbox version of an IAD tatami. It's way faster than mine and comes up very close to the Kirei method. Here's a comparison of his very fast IAD tatami with the Kirei method. Just like Enoch did, you can approximate a Kirei tatami by inputting an IAD, or 956, and then 236K as fast as possible. This is really only reasonable for hitbox, keyboard, and maybe pad players. That said, it's usually more comfortable for most to learn the Kirei method. Alright, so I keep saying Kirei method. Let's finally go over that. The Kirei method requires smoothly chaining together two techniques, the Tiger Knee and the Instant Air Dash. 
We've already gone over the instant air dash, so let's go over the Tiger Knee really quick. Tiger Knee is a fighting game technique that works for any air okay special move. Input the motion for the special move, jump, and then press the required button. If you perform it correctly, your attack will come out in the air. It should all be one fluid motion. So for Tasami, roll your quarter circle into up forward and then press K. Here's an example of a Tiger Knee Tatami. Note that this isn't very useful in game, but it'll help you learn how to use carry Tatami. Once you've got that down, just add an instant air dash onto the Tiger Knee before you press K. Just like before, keep it one smooth motion. Input 2369, then return back to neutral or 5, then press forward and K. Practice carry for a few minutes each time you boot the game and you'll have it down in no time. If you're having trouble, here are some debugging tips. If you're getting a super jump to Tommy with no air dash, work on your instant air dash skills and make sure you aren't skipping the neutral input. If you're getting an instant air dash followed by a jump kick, you should press K more quickly, directly after pressing forward in the air. Kiri to Tommy is even easier to combo into than IED back to Tommy because you have forward momentum. Here's an example of a simple follow-up combo. Next, we'll go over FRCs. The first thing you need to know about FRCs is that the input display in training mode, which you can turn on from the pause menu, flashes white during FRC points. Not all moves have FRC points, but you can easily figure out which ones do and how to time them using this feature. For this video, I'm only going to cover three FRCs. They're the most useful FRCs, though, so I recommend learning them first. The first FRC I recommend learning is Jump D. It's the easiest to learn, and it's incredibly useful for mid-screen combo extensions. Here's what Jump D FRC looks like. One nice thing about Jump D FRC is that if you mess up an FRC on a normal move, you'll still get a red RC if you have 50 tension. This is nice while you're learning because you get to continue your combo even though you messed up. When practicing Jump D FRC, you'll also need to learn follow-ups. Almost all of Jump D's important follow-ups require you to air dash afterwards. For the purpose of this video, I'll describe two follow-ups. If you're closest to the corner, you'll want to Jump D FRC air dash JH to Tommy. This is the easier of the two follow-ups, and I'd recommend learning it first. If you're farther from the corner, you'll need to jump D FRC air dash to Tommy to continue the combo. This is a little tougher, so learn it slowly over time. Next up is Ground to Tommy FRC. Ground to Tommy FRC is a useful neutral tool, and it can be a useful combo tool once you've learned some advanced techniques. I'm sure some of you have already heard about the infamous to Tommy FRC Kire, but trust me, don't try to learn that yet. Instead, learn to Tommy FRC as a pressure tool first and slowly work your way up to the advanced combos from it. Here's what to Tommy FRC looks like. Notice how late in the move it is. Also keep in mind that you can't normal RC to Tommy, so if you miss the FRC point, you're stuck in recovery. Here's an example of to Tommy FRC when used to extend pressure. Lastly, we'll go over soccer at FRC. Even though Baku is usually a better 25 meter option, Sakura FRC can be useful when the opponent is too far away to Baku, or when you've committed to a Sakura and think you'll get hit for it. I don't have any video examples for this, but it should be pretty easy to learn if you've already got the other two down. The next technique I want to share is the negative edge. It sounds fancy, but it's pretty simple. The positive edge is when you press down a button, and the negative edge is when you release the button. Normal moves only come out on the positive edge, but special moves can come out on both positive or negative edges. There's a lot to learn from this. First, you should always press and release the button when you're doing a special move, because you get two chances to time the move correctly, instead of just one. Second, this is a building block for some of Biken's more advanced stuff. Third, Biken can do some nonsense using negative edges that no other character can. Let me describe a situation for you that you've probably run into before. You're in a block string, and you want to use a guard cancel. You input the guard cancel and hit the button, only to find that you're no longer in block stun, and you get a normal instead of the guard cancel. You get hit. What you can do instead is to use negative edges to option select guard cancels. Press down the button beforehand and hold it. When you're ready, input the guard cancel motion and release the button. If you're in block stun, you'll get a guard cancel, since it's a special move. If you're not in block stun, you won't get anything at all, and you can continue blocking. The tricky part about this technique is pressing the button in the first place without accidentally getting a normal on the positive edge. One way you can do this is to press the button when you know you are for sure in block stun, but this is dangerous. The easier way is to use faultless defense. By pressing faultless defense, you get to press two buttons down without risking a normal coming out. You can then negative edge it later. 
Here's a potentially useful example. Here, I run towards Johnny, FD break, input the guard cancel motion, and then release S. If he attacks, I get a Sakura. If he didn't attack, nothing would come out. There are a lot of fun shenanigans involving this technique, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. All in all, it's a little less useful than everything else on this list, but I did want to cover it so you can start thinking about how you might want to use it. Alright, here's the last technique for the video, the instant overhead Yozansen. Yozansen is a move that comes out incredibly quickly and hits overhead. The catch is that you can only use it in the air. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use that tiger knee technique I mentioned earlier in the Kirei Tatami section. By TKing Yozansen, you gain access to an unreactable overhead. Here's what it looks like. There are a lot of ways to do TK Yozansen. The first and simplest way is to input the dragon punch motion, hit up forward, and then S. This is what most players use. The second motion listed here is similar to a full circle input. You start it forward, roll all the way around to up back, press down forward, then S. Lastly, if you can input things incredibly fast, you can just jump and input the dragon punch motion as quickly as possible. This is really only feasible for hitbox and keyboard players unless you're a freak of nature. Practice these motions and figure out which one feels natural for you. Practice it a little bit every day on both player 1 and player 2 sides until you get the hang of it. Make sure you're getting the lowest possible Yozansen you can, otherwise it will whiff on short crouchers, like this. Once you've learned how to input TK Yozansen, it's time to learn how to combo from it. It requires 50 meter because you need to red RC. The best corner follow-up is to use Tatami, but it's difficult because you have to squeeze so many motions and buttons into such a short time frame. To make it easy on yourself, I recommend doing TK Yozansen, RCing and holding down the RC, inputting a quarter circle forward, then releasing the buttons to negative edge of Tatami. Try not to rush the quarter circle. Here's a corner combo that I like. It's not quite optimal, but it's easy, works on most of the cast, and still does tons of damage. Mid-screen, you can still follow up with Tatami, but continuing the combo after that can get dicey, since it depends on screen positioning, character weight, and character hurt box. Instead, you can do something a little easier like following up with a jump K. Here's a simple example of that. Depending on your screen positioning, there are definitely some better ones that don't cost an extra 25 meter. So check the Dustlip wiki for those. Thanks for watching, and I hope it was helpful. I plan on releasing a video on pressure and a video on defense. But in the meantime, check out the Plus R Discord's Biken channel and the Biken page on the Dustloop wiki. Enoch, the hitbox player that helped me out with the IAD Tatami, has done a ton of work on the combo page and it's an excellent starting place to learn more. Peace out, and get to practicing.